Hello, welcome to Unit 1, the theoretical section. If you watched the short video entitled, What to Expect, you know that you have the choice of learning from either this video or the written content directly below. If you haven't watched What to Expect, please do so before moving ahead. Let's begin. In this unit, you'll learn three notes, six rhythms, and the most common time signature. Once you've understood these symbols, jump to the Let's Play section and begin the practical component on your own. I'll start by explaining the very basics of notation. The staff is the first symbol you need to know. It consists of five equally spread out lines, which create four empty spaces. A pitch name is determined by the position of its corresponding note on the staff. A note placed further up on the staff is higher in pitch, like this, then a note placed further down on the staff, like this. When this symbol is placed at the beginning of each staff, it's called a treble clef. Guitar music is written in this clef. So now you're ready to read notes. The three notes taught in this unit are B, D, and E. Let's examine them one by one. The note B is on the middle line of the staff. Think of in between, and it's played like this. The strings on the guitar are numbered one through six from the floor upward. For example, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we can say that the note B is played as the second string open. The note D is directly below the staff. Think of D for down, because it's down below the first staff line. And the note D is played as the fourth string open. The note E is below the third ledger line. These extra lines below the staff are called ledger lines. Notice that they're evenly spaced and are meant to be an extension of the staff. To remember the pitch E, imagine a vertical line placed to the left of the three ledger lines and notice how it makes an uppercase letter E. The note E is played as the sixth string open, like this. To be a good sight reader, you must train in reacting to a symbol in a few ways. You need to say it and play it. By say it, I mean you can see the note on the staff and say its name instantly. By play it, I mean you can think of the name of the pitch and play it on the guitar right away. I imagine that some of you are already really good at at least one of these. And if you're already quick at saying the name of the note but still have trouble quickly playing it, then take a moment to play each of these three pitches you just learned, saying each name out loud as you play it, like this. B, D, B, E. If you're good at quickly playing the pitch on your guitar but still have trouble quickly saying the name of the note, then I suggest you go to a free website like musictheory.net and test yourself on seeing the note and saying its name until you're lightning fast. Okay, let's move on to rhythms. Now you'll learn six rhythmic symbols, the whole note, half note, quarter note, and their rest equivalents. The whole note consists of an oval shape that's not colored in. I've chosen the note B to correspond to the whole note. However, any pitch can appear in any rhythm. Pitches and rhythms are the main building blocks of standard music notation and are combined in countless ways. So to be an excellent sight reader, it's important to be quick at recognizing, processing, and playing pitches and rhythms. Okay, so back to the whole note. A whole note sustains for four beats. This means you strum or pluck the appropriate string and let it ring for four counts, like this. One, two, three, four. Remember, you want to begin counting the moment you strike the string. The whole rest looks like a top hat placed upside down. A whole rest creates silence for four beats. I suggest you mute the strings when you encounter a rest like this. One, two, three, four. A half note consists of a note head that is not colored in as well as a stem. It sustains for two beats like this. One, two. The half rest looks like a top hat placed right side up. A half rest creates silence for two beats like this. One, two. The half and whole rests both look like top hats, so how can you remember which is which? 
Well, imagine you're playing in the street for money and have your top hat upside down to receive tips. Would you want $4 or $2? I'm guessing you'd want four. That's how you can remember that the upside down hat indicates four beats of silence. The quarter note is the last note we'll learn about, and it has a note head that is colored in, as well as a stem. The quarter note sustains for one beat, like this. One. The quarter rest is a somewhat squiggly line. It creates silence for one beat, like this. One. Now that you know basic rhythmic symbols, we need to examine how they combine to proceed in time. Most songs have a relatively steady beat, and composers typically clump the beats into groups of two, three, or four, with an accent placed on the first beat of the group. For example, groups of two beats sound like this. One, two, one, two, one, two. And groups of three beats sound like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And finally, groups of four beats sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The symbols that serve to group beats together are the bar line, measure, and time signature. Bar lines are vertical lines placed on the staff. They divide the staff into measures. A measure is the space between the two bar lines. Measures are important because they contain the groups of beats. If the song is grouped into four beats per measure, that means each measure must add up to four beats, no more and no less. The time signature is placed at the beginning of the piece. It contains two numbers. The top number expresses how many beats are in a measure, and the bottom number expresses what type of rhythmic note value receives one beat. Think of the bottom number as a fraction with the number one on top. If you do this, then you can think of the top number as the answer to the question, how many, and the bottom number as an answer to the question, what kind. The most common time signature is 4-4, four, four, which means four quarter notes per measure. Two more types of bar lines are useful to know. The double bar line marks the end of a musical section, and the ending bar line marks the end of an entire composition. Notice that the second line in the symbol is thicker and darker than the first. Well, we're done with the theoretical portion of this unit, but please watch the next video called Unit 1 Practical. In it, I'll explain how to engage with the exercises and compositions in the Let's Play section. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.